So we're here in the GB News pub, and I'm joined on Talking Pints by the editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine and royal biographer, Ingrid Seward. Ingrid, welcome to Thank Talking you very Pints. Much. It's good to have you here. Very nice to have a drink. Yeah, on TV, and we're allowed. Hey, <laughs> hey, but, but, but the whole point of this is we want to have a proper conversation, and it's kind of what people do, isn't it? They have a drink and they talk to each other. So I want you to tell people about Majesty magazine, because not everybody necessarily that is watching now knows about it. So it's basically to do with everything to do with not just our royal family, but royal families around the world. It certainly is, and it started, I mean, it started in 1980... Can you believe that? You probably weren't even born then. Oh, yes. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it started in 1980 with the Queen Mother's 80th birthday. Yeah, OK. And because of the advent of Diana, it really took off. I mean, I wasn't working for it then, but it really took off. And it was... So, the, 81, think, the royal wedding? Yeah. So, it, it was... Um, there was no colour supplements in those days, apart from... The Times, uh, the Sunday Times, is the only magazine to have a colour supplement. And there were all these amazing pictures of the royal family. Mm. And these two brothers, who both are now no longer with us, sadly, um, decided, well, let's put a colour magazine together using some of these great pictures. And all the photographers used to come in to the office in, in Highgate and bring their photographs. And these two guys, you, you'd appreciate this, they put it together in the pub. Well, quite right, too, <laughs> absolutely. So Diana, yeah, so Diana, say, 81, the, the, her, her marriage to Charles, um, and Diana brings some extraordinary glamour, doesn't she, into the royal family? I think she, she brought a, a huge interest that wasn't there before mm. and, and this incredible glamour. And, of course, nobody knew that it was going to go quite so mad as it did. And the Queen sort of said to her, well, don't worry, you know, it'll all, it'll all smooth down... And, of course, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It ended disastrously and tragically. But you've, as somebody that's, 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 that's you know, written about, followed the royal family, and you got to know the royal family, or, or some of them. Uh, and, of course, your late husband, Ross, who was a great journalist, um, he was, at, he was, I understand he was at Gordonston with... He was at Gordonston, yes, everybody. He let everybody know that. Yeah. He was at Gordonston with, with Prince Charles. Yes. In the same class. Yes. And um, they became sort of vague, vague friends. I'm sure, knowing Ross, you know, that, as I did, that he made sure he became friends with Prince Charles. But, in fact, he, 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 he loved Gordonston. I mean, my husband loved yeah. Gordonston. And he said that, uh, that, that they was just... Charles had a really hard time there. Because people would... I, I, if you were friendly with Charles, they accused you of being a sycophant. And if you weren't friendly with him, they said you were a bully. And Charles did get bullied there. And there's one story that I really love, and I only discovered this much, much later, because Ross wrote an article for Woman's Own when he, when he left, <laughs> all about my, my school days with Prince Charles, so you can imagine he was so persona non grata. I bet he was. Oh, he really was in those days. And he tells this wonderful story, because Prince Charles used to snore. And he was, <laughs> li and he was in, a, in, a, in a bunk, or in a bed, you know, one of those sort of wrought iron beds right by the open window, which was kept open winter and summer. So the boys in the sort of dorm above put down a little uh, speaker attached to a tape recorder and they recorded him snoring. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but of course they did. Of course they did. But it yeah. was quite a clever idea, actually. And they were going to flog the tape. This is the future king snoring. Mm. Well, how can you imagine when the uh, headmaster found out? I mean, they, they weren't flogged because that didn't happen at Gordon's. And they, they, were, they had a severe telephone. I bet they did. And naturally the, the tape was confiscated. So somewhere in this world it still exists, this <laughs> tape of our future king snoring. And is our future king a friend of yours? I wouldn't like to say that any of the royal family are real friends of mine because they don't... They are, you know, they're only really friends within themselves. And anyone that thinks they're a friend of the royals isn't really. You'd appreciate that, wouldn't you? You'd understand yeah. that. Yeah, no, I do. I mean, I, I had a bit of a fallout with him. Um, he turned up at the European Parliament. Oh, I remember that, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, as 2005 or six. So Charlie turns up at the European Parliament, gives a big speech to the MEPs... Um, basically says that the European Union needs to have more power. What? Um, 
and that the North Pole will be gone within seven years, and we're all facing catastrophe, we're all going to die, um, unless the European Union has more power. And I thought, well, this is very odd. Uh, this is a future king um, asking for more sovereignty to be given to the... So I refused, because of standing ovation. Standing ovation for what he'd said. And I refused to stand up. And I, I have met him a couple of times since. And to be fair, he's got a sense of humour. You know, he has. You know, he knows that, he, he knows that we have rather different views. <laughs> but he I, probably appreciates that. I think, he's a, I, mean, I, I think he's an alarmist and he probably thinks I, I'm, you know, I'm not alarmed enough. But I just... And yes, so look, polite, friendly, good sense of humour. I've seen that firsthand with him. But does he have the connection with the people that's needed to be a king? I think he does. Do you really? I know, I know politicians don't particularly, but I think I am a big fan. I think he really cares in a way that someone that wasn't in his position wouldn't have the ability to do. He really, really cares about our future. He cares about us. <coughs> he cares about the way things look. I mean, it's all very old-fashioned. He talks to plants. He's a bit wet, really, isn't Everybody he? talks to plants. Do they? Oh, oh, yes, gosh, Maybe I'm missing do. out. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe I think you should have a one. chat maybe with your plants. But he comes across as being a bit wet sometimes. No, he doesn't. No, 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 I will stand up for him. I am such a big fan of his. I think... I think he's having a, had a very difficult time because he's he's constantly sort of uh, overshadowed by the ghost of Diana. Mm. And I think Diana would hate that because she said to me, and this is... She did actually say this to me. She said that, that, that she still had a great fountain of love for Prince Charles despite everything. And she would hate the way that she is being perceived as being this person that's stalking him now. Interesting. And she also And said he does me, seem happy with Camilla, doesn't he? Genuinely. She also said to me, which I could never quite work out, it wasn't Camilla that ruined our marriage. And I thought, what am I hearing? Mm. She said it was the people around Prince Charles. They're so sycophantic, they never say no to him. Mm. And that's what's ruined our situation. And I thought, there's a big element of truth in that. But now we have, now we have Prince Harry and Meghan, who appear to be not just mad with money lust, but actually intent on destroying the institution. I just don't understand where Harry's head is. Because he, we, we all loved him, and he was like everybody's slightly wayward son. And you wanted to... Well, we like... He was Jack the Lad, wasn't he? He was, and you wanted to hug him, and he said, oh, I don't like the press. And he said, oh, darling, I understand, you know, but you've got to do it. And mm. he was just... He was... I suppose he was very childlike, really. He's not very bright, and I think he would probably admit that. He's not. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. And she's clearly quite domineering. And she is clearly quite domineering. But I think, uh, reading into the whole situation, <coughs> Harry wanted out of the royal family a long time ago. He just didn't know how to do it. Because when he was in the army, he said, I, I do remember ages ago, he said, I just wish I wasn't a prince. Mm. And I remember Jilly Cooper coming up and saying, what a tragic thing for this mm. boy to say. Mm. Here, here he is in this life of incredible privilege that none of us will ever know anything like. And you're not prepared to take on the responsibility. Well, they just walked away, didn't they? And they planned to walk away. And I think that is what, so I think, sad I, I, for I tell Charles. You what, I tell you what disgusted me, Ingrid. I, a friend of mine, ex-Royal Marine, said there was a big Royal Marine dinner fundraising dinner for veterans that Harry was supposed to be at. He cancelled the week before. That can happen in the busy diaries. But the same night that Royal Marine dinner took place was the night that he was in Leicester Square overheard talking to the boss of Disney, asking whether his wife could get some voiceover work. And so, you know... Oh, that's not good. So, you know, there he was, Lieutenant General of the Royal Marines, a very privileged position. They've all turned against him. And I, frankly, we've got the Diamond Jubilee coming up next... Uh, sorry, the Platinum Jubilee coming up next year. Big moment. Will Harry and Meghan come back for it? I think they will, because I think they need to. I think in order to keep this incredibly sort of <coughs> magic persona that they appear to have in America, they need to be seen mm. to be sort of hobnobbing with... I'm not sure that magic persona is going to last over there. I, I could be wrong. Maybe on the West Coast it will. I, I just don't know. I don't really understand how America works anymore. Nor does America anymore. No, I don't think America understands it either. <laughs> but I, I just do, do know that there's a, a whole bunch of Americans that don't like Harry and Meghan at all, and there's a whole bunch of Americans that absolutely love them and they can do no wrong. 
and the twain will never meet. Mm. Mm. And it's a quite an ugly situation. Strange. Very strange. And, and, and finally, Ingrid, some final thoughts. Uh, the Queen, astonishing person. I mean, all of us that meet her are, to some extent, in awe of her. I think that's true. I, Donald Trump, who is... Oh, I know you're, you're pally with him. But, but, no, I am. But I'll tell you something. For him, meeting the Queen, I mean, when I spoke to him afterwards, he was almost childlike with excitement. It meant so much to him, because his mother had been a Scot and a great royalist. Uh, just, just give me a few final thoughts on, on the Queen as she approaches 70 years on the throne. I think that she... Ha she was brought up uh, in, in an era that, where you never, ever showed emotion. Yeah. Um, so she's stoic. She's completely stoic. Behind the scenes, she's got a wonderful waspish sense of humour, which people have, have seen a bit now. Um, she's very funny. She's always been surrounded by gay staff, if you like. I, I don't know if we're allowed to say that. We are, yeah. We are. Uh, and she has almost what I would think. <laughs> I, she's got that kind of humour. She's so quick and so funny. Mm. And she has huge interests. You know, her, her racing and her horses are really mm. keep her going. And I think that the Queen, a bit like her mother, you know, if something is really she can't deal with, she just doesn't. And it's going to be a big year next year, isn't it? It's going to be a big year for her next year. It's going to be very tiring. Mm. But, I mean, she, she will be determined that she's going to get through it and enjoy it. Well, you keep covering it for us. That was Ingrid Seward joining us. And it will be a big year next year, 70 years, the Queen on the throne.